agree with me, disagree with me. None of that concerns me. What matters is why. And we've got a really long show tonight. We'll get into the greater theme of this show later on. Just as a reminder to folks who are watching at home, welcome to another episode of the Mike Snell Show, where at the end of the show, we will go through your live Q&A. So this is your opportunity to hold my feet to the fire, to engage with the topic, to you know call me out if I say anything either stupid or just incorrect. And of course, as we always do, we have available here in this video's description, and as you can see on the screen, the invite link for Discord for the Discord server. Um, let me actually, um, uh, I might actually have to update that. I may actually have to update that. So folks, let me know if this one doesn't work if you're using that. Otherwise, link is in this video's description. Let me go ahead and um, let me see if I can if I can get that link dropped in to the Discord into the comment section here. Now, if you guys are interested in in, in calling in. Hop into the Discord server. Link is in this video's description. If you're having trouble getting into the Discord server, let me know in the comments, either on YouTube or on Facebook. Like I, And as has been implied, we are streaming on YouTube and on Facebook. If you'd prefer to watch on Facebook, link is in this video's description. If you'd prefer to watch on YouTube and join the conversation there, link is also in this video's description. Now, with that out of the way, I know it's been a really long time, so you folks know there's a lot to go over, so we're going to have a really long show. I know some of you don't, we normally try to stick to an hour. Some of you can't make it until five minutes before we usually close. So don't be afraid. We'll be able to, we'll have, we'll, we will go way past our, our one hour mark tonight. Um, special midweek show, which isn't because I, I uh, it's, it's because this is when I had time to do it. So this Sunday, hopefully we'll have something of an interview. I have to reach out uh, to the person I'm hoping to interview about that topic we're probably going to have a, a New Year's Eve special because I'm not going to waste time um, doing this sort of thing during uh, Christmas and New Year uh, during Christmas during the week surrounding Christmas. I'm probably not going to have a show on Christmas Day. Come to think of it, that's Sunday, so we'll have to wait. I guess we'll have to wait till Boxing Day probably for that interview. But stay tuned. We're we'll hope, hoping to have that interview coming up soon. We're going to do a bit of a New Year's Eve special here. It'll be kind of a long show, more of a AMA and a wrap up for the year. Then we're going to take a little bit of a brief hiatus. So get your questions in on this one because this is going to be the opp your opportunity to reach out. This is going to be your opportunity to participate in this conversation and to connect with me here if you don't have the means to connect with me otherwise. So get those questions in. Remember, get them in right away. We'll get to the questions towards the end. Get them in so you don't, don't forget where where questions and comments. Get them in so that you don't forget them um, before we get to by the time we get to uh, Q and A. And you know, again, real quick, brief hiatus is going to take place because there's some bigger video projects I really want to work on for this channel, well, both on Facebook and on YouTube. And you may see me driving around town getting some content for all of that. So it's been a long hiatus. And there's a lot that's taken place. The first place that I want to start is with uh, this event that I got a chance to go and film a little bit of, the Run Santa Run. Oops, do I have that right? Yes, I do. The, uh, the Run Santa Run uh, 5K that was there to benefit Harry Brook Park. This was a really cool event. They collected toys. They handed out books. And, and you know, there was 140 or so participants. Uh, so that was a cool event. Hopefully, I'll have some video out. Uh, you know, it unfortunately, like the video I got is kind of difficult to parse together with the time um, that I've had, which we'll, which we'll get to. Uh, for those who didn't see it too, oh, over the course of, of Thanksgiving weekend, we also had um, the tree lighting, which uh, for those of you who missed the moment, let's relive it. We need a countdown from three, Mr. Mayor. Does that sound right to you? Good. I tried from 99. They told me no. <laughs> All right, let's see these trees light up. Here we go. Three, two, one. Light them up. Three, two, one. Light them up. I have to say... For the entire crowd, at some point in the next couple of weeks, yeah. stand right here. And you can see every one of those trees lit up. This is the most beautiful view anywhere. I'm on for a little while, if that's okay. Absolutely. I'd like to meet people here. Would that be all right? Yeah. Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. 
So that was a cool thing that took place over Thanksgiving weekend. And speaking of lighting up and uh, of Christmas lights, we also had over just recently, just a few days ago, the uh, Parade of Lights. Uh, this is the best video I could get of that, so we can check that out. Christmas lights are really, really, really hard to get good photography of in terms of both still photography and videography. Uh, I wish people would start holding their phones the way that human eyes are positioned, which is horizontally. Um, but hey, we got some video footage. That was a really cool event put on uh, by the local fire companies, and uh, there were some other uh, participants as well uh, into that. So, okay, sorry. There, now you guys can see. All right, let's, that's, we'll start this video over so you guys can see. It's a little bit, little, little bit of a, um, a flashing, what do they call that? I, for, I forget, the, the flashing light syndrome. Uh, a little bit epileptic, I, 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 I suppose, but that's what that looked like. So that was a cool event. We also had, uh, over the course, uh, we, this is, this is, a, this is an event that was held at New Milford Center Cemetery, which is dear and dear to me. That's where my family's, uh, where my family is largely buried. Uh, and that is the, pl the placing of wreaths on all of the veterans' graves. Graves, Gene Mariano, uh, is one of the heads of this entire, of this sort of event. It's called Wreaths Across America. They have a, an event, uh, a, a, um, a ceremony that takes place right at noon all across the country at all the cemeteries for that's the, there to honor the fallen veterans of to honor our fallen veterans this is something that um i always helped gene out when i was working out the new Memphis territory by at least providing the list of veterans uh, if i was unavailable to work to, to join her that day so that was something cool that is kind of near and dear to me that i thought i'd have people share uh i'd, I'd share with folks um and you know next year if you guys this is, this is something you want to get into then you guys can reach out to Jean. Her, you can see her Facebook page is on on there as well. One of the other cool stories that came out of the past few weeks, it started off kind of sad, but then it really showed something of the true spirit of this town and why this is the best town in the USA. And it kind of starts with, uh, let me get this, let me get this pulled up correctly. It kind of starts with this post from Pat Erickson. Words can't explain how I'm feeling about things this morning. This is not a happy message. This is not a happy message. You see, Pat, re Pat and Mike Erickson really like Christmas. They really like decorating. They really love the Christmas spirit. So what they, one of the things that they do, among other things around this time of year, is at the roundabout on Still River Drive, they like to put a Christmas tree with some battery-powered lights on it uh, with a little solar panel to, you know, uh, to, to charge the batteries because you're just dealing with tiny little LEDs. Uh, a solar panel to charge the batteries during the day, and that way at night, at least for a few hours, you have some lights on. The Christmas tree that they donate, that they volunteer their time to essentially donate at the center of this, um, at the center of this roundabout. Sadly, the tree was stolen. Um, and as, as was stolen at one point. This is from, uh, this is from Lisa Agee. Is this, do I have this the right post? Yes, this is from Lisa Ag. I I am going to uh, scroll this down so you guys can't see the whole post because it would make sense. It's kind of odd to put the whole post because she keeps updating it. Um, there is a little, this is from Lisa Ag. Uh, there is a little in stature, ha ha, girl, Amy Milford, who is in danger of losing her Christmas spirit. Last night, the Christmas tree on the roundabout was stolen. This woman and her husband, Mike, have worked tirelessly for New Milford over the years, and for the past few have put up the trees on the roundabout and further down on Route 7. We need to put this tree back. Please help us. We are inviting and asking all of New Milford to donate whatever you can. We are working on a tree. We need battery-operated lights. Most of all, we need people to put up and decorate the tree. The tree is going up. Whoever stole it will not win. Our girl is sad and doesn't want to do it anymore. Let's show her we care, and the holiday spirit lives in New Milford. This is, and the response, of course, for anyone who's familiar with New Milford, the response was very expectedly, extremely welcoming, warm, and positive. And the response was immediate. And this is, this is from December 10th, right? So I know it's a few days, so if you haven't heard the news. And the response was immediate. On the same day, on the same day that all of this took place, uh, let's see, on the same day that all of this took place, Northfield Fire Department was able to donate a tree and a ton of volunteers were able to show up and get some decorations hung and to replace the tree 
same day. This is Pat Erickson's follow-up. To all of you who expressed how much the treat, let's zoom in just a little bit more. One more. To all of you who expressed how much the treat means to you, we are on our way up to put up another tree right now. If anyone wants to come and put any items on the tree, please come. We only have one set of lights, but it will have to do. Thank everyone for showing you care. Thank you, Lisa Ag, for your post. Thank you, Northville Fire Department and Jennifer for replacing the tree for us. Thanks, thanks, Lisa, too, for doing this, really, because Pat Erickson would not, is not the type of person to put out this post for herself. This is not the type of person that would do some sort of grandstanding or would try to, you know, fish for, uh, fish for compliments, effectively. And again, this is all on the same day. This is just a few hours later. From, from Pat Erickson, thank you to the Northfield Fire Department for donating a replacement tree for the one stolen from the roundabout. Thank you to Debbie and Aaron from the Home Depot for donating more decorations. There is one set of lights on the tree since they don't, didn't have any in stock. A special thank you to Lisa Agee for her post. I really don't think I could do it all over again. I hope whoever stole the tree at least realizes he stole joy from little children this year. And this is just to finish up uh, Lisa's post, edit in Milford Proud. This town is amazing. So many people have reached out. Pat and Mike need help. So this is a little bit earlier in the day. They are down there now putting up the tree, putting up the new tree and lights that were donated. They need ornaments and help. Please, if you can help uh, now, 1.20 p.m. Saturday at the roundabout. They are picking up lights now and we'll be right back. There's a little, inst and you can see the rest of the post. <clears throat> uh, this is what the final product looked like, at least during the day be cool to kind of, you know, I should probably zoom out so you guys can see this picture. There we go. A little bit better. There we go. Now we can see the whole picture in one shot. That's what the, that's what that replacement Christmas tree looks like. Um, now that it's been replaced and, you know, Lou from the local radio station, uh, managed to, to, to put together an article. We have our own little, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice heartwarming Christmas story here uh, in New Milford that wound up taking place. Some Grinch stole, you know, that that Christmas tree that that Pat and Mike put so much effort into br put bringing uh, for free to everyone who ends up driving by the, the roundabout. And the the minute this community found out about it, everyone got behind it and replaced it. You know, look at them all through the darkness I'm bringing. They're not sad at all. They're actually singing and replaced the Christmas tree post haste. From Lisa Marie Agee, if you want to thank Pat and Mike for all their dedication to New Milford, drive by their house, and this is going to segue into the next thing, to see the holiday lights and leave a little donation at the end of the driveway if you can. All donations are going to New Milford Field Food ba Fuel Bank this year, 65 Buckingham Road. To follow up on this, you know what, let me, let me talk about this real quick. I actually took some footage. Christmas lights are really, really, really hard to film correctly. So I may have to do a redo. I have some footage. I don't think I'm going to actually wind up releasing it because it all looks pretty bad because the lighting just doesn't work um, when you're dealing with tiny, tiny little LEDs and just pitch black around it. So hopefully I'll have some footage out. 65 Buckingham Road is where Mike and, Lisa and um, Pat Erickson live. They have one hell of a lights display. They, t they put tons and tons of time into it and energy, especially Mike, puts all this time and energy into it. And they love having visitors just drive down their highway, uh, their driveway. Uh, it, there's plenty of places to turn around at the end and in the middle of their driveway. And, you know, it's just checking out all their, their, their hard work and checking out their lights. At the end of the driveway, on the right-hand side, there's a white mailbox. So for those that are checking it out, Everybody's encouraged to give a little bit of a donation to the fuel bank, especially with the rising price of uh, fuel that we're uh, home heating oil and the rising price of everything at this time of year. Um, not just in, and broadly because it's this time of year, but in this this year, 2022, you know, we all know what this inflation situation is. So this is this is let me follow up their post. Uh, please put donations in the mailbox. Well, I'll zoom in one more. Please put donations in the mailbox near the garage. Every dollar will go to New Milford Fuel Bank. Any amount will help. Um, well, after my husband spent putting up lights for 27 days now, the Christmas lights are on 65 Buckingham Road. Please be sure to drive down the driveway. It's a really cool site. You guys got to see it. Uh, Merry Christmas, everyone. I was, it was suggested we collect donations towards the light bill. We do it to make others happy. So instead, this year, we will, be, we will put up the donation mailbox to go to the town's fuel bank. We think many people will be struggling to keep their homes warm this year, so please, if anyone wants to make a donation, let's help others to keep warm this winter. Checks, 
can be made out to New Milford Fuel Bank. So that's a really cool thing that takes place. I don't have, unfortunately, I didn't have time to put together because uh, it's just so recent. Um, the the Tim Clark and his family does uh, a, a wonderful similar uh, uh, setup where they they uh, they spoof. Uh, their setup is something of a, a take on Christmas Vacation and. Um, the, their cool setup that they have, um, that's on Sunny Valley Road behind Sarah Noble. I know it as the old high school. So that's they're doing a similar thing. They've got a mailbox where you guys can donate. And I believe that they're also sending their donations to the fuel bank. So that's another cool setup that, that you guys can check out. Wonder this is this is I'm trying to share the good news here. Uh, because this is what we do, and there has this this past few weeks, I've, part of why I didn't want to do this show and why I've been re- reluctant to do this show and, and and like really get on it is because it's it's been it's just been like three or four weeks of like really really good news. So you know I know that I, I do this because I feel something of a duty to you guys to to inform for, inform the community of, of uh, the town news and politics. And there's some in the ha- second half of that is politics, and people don't really want to talk about it, but people do want to stay informed on the matter. And, you know, it just, it's such a downer to, to immerse yourself in that sort of thing when you're surrounded by so much good news. As Pete Bass says, yes, best town in the USA. Such a, it is the best town in the USA and such a, has, it has such character that we have our own happy ending Christmas story right here in New Milford as, we ha- we, as you guys have seen. Uh, it, to put on my Lions hat, we, the Lions had their senior dinner. Uh, let me get that post up. Let me get that post up for for everybody to see. The Lions hosted their annual senior dinner. We uh, were able to bring a delicious meal. Doggone it. Stop with these notifications. Delicious meal to... Um, uh, I have the wrong one open. Here we go. A delicious meal to 120 seniors. This is what some of these photos look like. That's what the VFW... Thanks to the VFW for hosting us. Uh, and thanks to everyone who came out for for the event. Thanks to all the donors who participated in this. A special thanks to the New Milford Leos, or the, uh, the, the youth version of the New Milford Lions Club. Um, this was the uh, Scattercoke version. Uh, the the kids that, that joined us in, in from the Leos, unbelievable help. Really cool event. Um, and, you know, the turkey was delicious. I had some myself as I was serving uh, during the meal time. We all got hungry. And, you know, you serve everyone else first, and then when there's leftovers, you... You have you have some the cook's got to eat too, so uh, this is a really cool event. Um, let me see if there's another footage. We this is Jack Healy, uh, Jack Leahy, excuse me, who is a pre- who is a Lions Club president um, and ha- said some words before. We had an appearance from Santa there, so that was a really cool event. Santa and his elves, especially Buddy, um, made a, made an appearance there, and you know it's always fun to serve with the Lions Club. So sharing that because. You know, I know it's a little bit self-serving to talk about the Lions Club, but hey, that's what we do, um, and that's what I like talking about. And, you know, again, more good news. You know, New Milford High School sports are just like an endless array of good news. So a special congratulations was given by, by Mayor Bass to at the, uh, this is the November 28th regular town council meeting immediately after Thanksgiving weekend uh, in recognition of the Milford field hockey and the New Milford High School field hockey team, which took uh, which were runner-ups at the state tournament, the Class M state tournament, which is the best performance they've ever had. So that's really cool news, you know, and good to hear about. And congratulations, of course, all around for them. Um, we, I can draw, give links to all these things if you guys want to. So let me know in the chat if, if that's something that you guys are interested in. They're usually really good. So it's always, they're always, a, they're, they're usually a pretty good source of good news because they're, they're just a historically extremely well-run program. Um, and I'm, I'm, I guess that's kind of a bad segue to the next topic because uh, one of the things that, that happened was New Milford High School football, the football team, finally had their first ever state tournament game against Maloney, and they held their own, to say the very least. Uh, they were up. So this is from Mike Boucher, who was giving us live updates of the game. They were up 7-6 to six in the third quarter, winning in the third quarter against the number three ranked team in the state, who was the Class L, yeah, Class L champion in the previous year, and unfortunately, sadly, they did wind up losing. However, it was the best performance at the state level that they've ever had. Um, there was a year where they did make the SWC championship game uh, when I was a junior in high school. Yes, junior in high school. That was, I think, the 2020, the 2001 season. 
And I think they went like 9-2 and two in the season that year. Congratulations to the New Milford, New Milford Greenway varsity team on their 29-14 win against New Fairfield and getting into the playoff, state playoffs for the first time ever. It's a great day for New Milford. Thanks, Brandon Merritt, for this pick. Feeling proud. This is just easier to find from Mike Boucher. That's why I use Mike Boucher's account. So, great Great performance from them, even though they did, they did wind up losing. I believe the final score was 27-7 to because they gave up three touchdowns in the fourth quarter. But good performance from them, so that's all good news. Uh, we, By the way, oh yes, so I should show this. So so folks know, the Maloney team, the Maloney team is a really good team. So to have had a, held a lead against Maloney going into the, at least into the third quarter, or in the third quarter, even if it was only 7-6, they had a lead in the third quarter. You can see there at, at number 10, uh, Maloney out of Meriden is a, was, a, at least according to maxpreps.com, the 10th best team overall in the state of Connecticut. So good job and congratulations to the New Milford High School football team. And, you know, and while we're staying in sports, what sport besides cross country, what sport can we go to that just perennially is a, it gives, brings us good news and perennially brings us W's except for the New Milford High School Green Wave wrestling team whose season kicked off by clobbering Brookfield and then also winning, taking first place, at, this is from New Milford Youth Wrestling Association, taking first place at uh, last weekend's Frank Chavez Holiday Tournament in Simsbury. Simsbury is no slouch, by the way. So we've got a whole bunch of, of, of placements here. We have 113 took second place. That's Alex Soberg. Uh, I'm not going to try to read all of these names. Uh, Adrian Fotopoulos, uh, th- uh, third place. Caden Reynolds, fourth place at 113. Um, at 132, we champion of the tournament at, at 132, winners at 152, 160, 182, 195, runners up at 220, 145, and uh, 113. So great performance from uh, the the boys uh, over well the wrestlers at New Milford High School this pa- the the pa- previous weekend. There's some cool video. Uh, let's see if I can get this correct. There's some cool video that's shared on New Milford Green Wave Wrestlings. Uh, that was from Peter Oberk. So, folks, if you want to follow New Milford High School Wrestling, there is a New Milford Green Wave Wrestling page on Facebook. Good page to follow. I followed it. You guys can kind of see. Let me turn the start, make sure the volume is off on this. But yeah, yeah, you guys can kind of see what some, what some of this action looked like. Some pretty cool footage from from the event. Um, uh, this is just some lead into it. Let's let's see if we can get. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Here's some action. Nice takedown. Um, I don't know his by Khalil. We've got another takedown here by Angelo Fernandez, who's a senior. And what you're going to see in the course of this video is that there are a few seniors. Nice pin. Um, there are a few seniors on this team, but this is a very young team, generally speaking. Um, yeah, okay, we did just see a few seniors, and this is another senior. But you're going to see kind of th- as the course of this video goes, this is actually a fairly young team. Where in, in my senior and junior year of of wrestling man it was just nothing but seniors on the varsity squad and these t- these guys are just better than we were back then um so that's always a good source of inspiration and tonight they are play they are wrestling in a match against stratford it probably just wrapped up a few minutes ago love to get updates i don't know if you guys have updates from that from that event but you know as an alumnus of the program i, I you know it's this is this is this is not just a program that succeeds on the map by t- by getting w's but in reality the the reason that this program is so regaled in this town is because they don't just win matches they make men from boys right like this is this is a brutally difficult program to get your to get yourself through and just surviving hell week the first week of of practice that's an accomplishment unto itself so shout outs to the new Milford high school wrestling program and coach peel um and coach daniels who i believe is still coaching there too um who are who are coaches when i was uh, when i was a, a, a young wrestler myself so that's always a good, a good source of good news that we can always rely on. <clears throat> All right. So uh, I explained that part of my break was my personal work. Speaking of good news, the plow is on the truck up and running. So, so yes, I am taking on jobs. I'll have a post out soon eventually. Um, but just go ahead and keep the recommendations coming. I'll take on some new clients uh, happy to take on some some more clients, especially in the north end of New Milford, which is where I have most of my clients. But hey, if you're in New Milford or if you're in the New Milford great area, give me a call. Uh, reach out to me. You guys know how to reach out to me. And th- those of you who are sending the recommendations, thanks so much. Like I, I want to show my gratitude for, to all those people that have been doing that. And um, 
yeah, I'll, I'll take, I'll just keep them coming, well, folks. Really appreciate it. Of course, in this, during this hiatus, with through now that we're, we've gone through a half hour of good news, there's also been some town council meeting. And that's what you guys are here for. I know this is what you guys are really here for. Right? And you're going to find me over the course of some of this content in terms of the conclusions kind of agreeing with the Democrats. Or to, be, to, as a friend of mine put it, the Dem Dames. But why? Because it's the principle of the thing that matters. Are we agreeing on principle? Or are we coming to the same conclusion from completely different directions? And this is, this is really material because this is going to get at the heart and spirit of the thing. It's going to get at what it is that defines not only your character, but your, but your politic in this situation. This is going to be the thing that I would, suge- I, I would suggest people look into when it comes time to vote, knowing that next year is an election, is an election year, and next year starts in, yeah, like just if, not even two weeks. So there's, there is, I can't think of a better example and place to start than the hot work ordinance. And did I get this out right? Yes, I did. Okay. So here is, we've, we've gone over the hot work ordinance. I don't want to go into too much detail on this matter, but here is the hot work ordinance. You know, the link is on the town. If you go to the town's YouTube channel and uh, go to the meetings where, where this was discussed, uh, it, the links are, are available on this drive. If you guys want me to, I, can, I guess I could share this link here. You know what? I actually do have this one in my notes, so I can easily share this one. Uh, let me see if I can find this. Uh, here we go. All right. So let me just drop this in the comments section here you guys, so you guys can follow along. Hi, Paul. Thanks for watching. We'll put this in YouTube as well. All right, this guy, uh, W.E.L. Emanuel. I don't even live in the U.S., but I think it's great you actually involve in, in local de- local decisions, the only ones that matter. Thanks, guys. Um, I just read the road to... All right, as someone else, I just read The Road to Serve Them, Serfdom, a hard book to read, Merry Christmas. I do actually have, there's a link in this video's description to my other channel, which is Mike Reads, where I did go over some of The Road to, uh, the road to Serfdom. Uh, Mike Reads is one of my favorite channels, so thanks for tuning into that channel. Link is in this video's description to my other channel. I'll, I'll be bringing that channel back up in line. It's a huge hiatus there. I'll be bringing that channel back up in line uh, eventually. Yes, please embed the links. Well done, New Milford High School uh, from Dan Donnelly. Thanks, guys. So that's uh, that's link. That link is in YouTube, and that link is also in. So we're not going to go into too much detail on the ordinance itself. I'm just going to read from this hot work defined 5B 24A hot work. So you guys, because like some people may not know what hot work even is. So let's talk. With, start with this. Hot work is any activity or process that involves open flames or that generates sparks or heat and includes, but is not limited to welding and allied processes, heat treating grinding, sawing pipes, which is with the torch, powder-driven fasteners, which, is, which are ram sets, uh, hot riveting, which nobody does. Uh, that's, how they used to, that's how they used to build skyscrapers uh, before the Depression uh, and pre-Depression era, before we had modern welding techniques. Torch-applied roofing, like at New Milford High School, pipe sweating, and any similar applications producing or using sparks, flame, or heat. And what I suggested at, when I spoke at public comment, as you guys might well be aware, at the November 14th, 2022 regular town council meeting was to change two words. So we can go back to that proposed, that proposal. What's, what the ordinance requires is that anyone who is doing any commercial, uh, any non-residential and any multifamily or mixed residential com- and commercial building work activity, including new construction, renovation, demolition, addition, re- roof, roofing, plumbing, steel fabrication, and the like, uh, involving hot work, whatever, shall require a permit issued by the New Milford Far- F- Fire Marshal. So we're adding on to our permitting process here in New Milford, it's, which is already, listen, I've been to Tennessee. I've been to these places where they basically don't even have zoning. Right? I've been to Georgia. I lived in Tennessee for a year. I lived in Georgia for four years. There's a, I, 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 tour, I, I was given a guided tour of the development taking place in the I-4 corridor in Florida and in, in North Florida broadly, uh, north of the I-4 corridor. We have a really burdensome, 
really cumbersome permitting process here in New Milford. And this is the singular biggest hurdle to, to development, to private development, not only in this town, but that we can also have an actual effect on. And this is adding to that permitting process. So for those of you who say, well, good, you know, hold on. My objection is to the broad idea that it's adding to the permitting process. I totally get that this is going to pass, right? And that there's, there are reasons for it to pass. So my recommendation, like I said, like, I, like for those of, since we talked about it on this show previously, uh, we talked, we did talk about it on, uh, we I have an entire section set aside on my channel. I posted a few weeks ago uh, about the solutions that I provide, what that I suggested, which is if we go back to the proposal, dropping two words, and those two words are producing or. I think I can highlight them. No, I can't highlight them. But right here, you can see, if you can see the cursor, I don't know if you can see it because it's pretty thin, but producing or using sparks. So if you get rid of producing or, then the sentence reads, hot work is any activity or process that involves open flames, etc., and any similar applications using sparks, flame, or heat. So anytime that you're using spark, flames, or heat in these commercial renovations, constructions, demolitions, et cetera, you're going to have to apply for a permit. This is probably going to add about two weeks to your pro to the process because it's just the nature of, of how these sort of clerical things just operate when it comes to the red tape of permitting. And the reason this is the case, and I explained this during my public comment, is that if you wind up, if you leave in producing, then, ooh, excuse me, then you wind up capturing certain jobs that nobody, there's no possible way anybody would, would, believe, would agree that is in the intended purpose of this hot work permit, right? I don't think that things like sanding cabinetry, things like hanging cabinetry on metal studs, right, where it's, it's going to involve a drill, Right, and if you, if you, if anyone who's ever operated a drill and drilling through steel or hard metal, it produces heat. Friction produces heat. This is one of the most well understood parts of the laws of thermodynamics. Right. This is this is an extension of entropy, but you don't even need to do that. You don't even need to be an expert in the, in the field. You don't have to have this physics understanding. Every seven year old bully on the playground knows that if you go like this to somebody's wrist and forearm, you give them an Indian burn. Every seven year old second grader who's ever slipped in the classroom knows that when you slip on the carpet, you get a rug burn. Friction produces heat. So that means this is going to capture things, like I said, like hanging cabinetry into metal studs. This is going to capture things like running a belt sander on the edge of a door so it fits into one of these door frames for one of these incredibly old commercial buildings like the one we're in right now where the door frames are impossible to get just right for the door that you're hanging into the door frame. So sometimes you have to shave that off. Friction produces heat. Things that would produce spark would be like, again, if you've got a room like mine where you've got some finish work to do, you're doing a renovation in this exact suite of offices that I'm in right now where you're going to need a nail gun. And the nail gun, it, it wouldn't be captured by this, right? Because it would actually be an endothermic process, not an exothermic process. Like, you know, the, the expand, rapid expansion of gases by itself with no in, outside introduction of heat actually tends to reduce heat. This is PV and equals NRT that we remember from high school chemistry. Right, this isn't like advanced collegiate stuff. You don't have to have a PhD in, in in chemistry to understand this sort of stuff. Let's say the contract you have says that for all of that trim work you're doing, all the finish work you're doing, no nails can be protruding. Right, and in the five thousand or so nails that you're gonna you're gonna be hammering in, you know there may be one in some weird corner that you can't quite get the nail gun into correctly. And man, it just no matter what you do, it just won't go in. It just won't go in. So how do you how do you resolve that? You get a Dremel tool, or you get an angle grinder, and you go done and it's over that produces sparks so that job is now going to require a hot work permit roofers who aren't even doing roofing and are just doing a gutter job at town hall and are having to deal with an incredibly old building you're not going to be able to fabricate the entirety of those downspouts to spec to, to spec off offsite 
you're going to have to produce them to within a certain range of spec off site, bring them to the site, and then you're going to take an angle grinder and you go, and you're going to cut them. It's going to be this fast. Ready? Boom. Done. About two seconds to make that cut. Two to three seconds to make that cut. It's aluminum. So it's technically going to produce sparks, but you're not even going to see them. Notice how in all of these things that I'm describing, you're not using the sparks. You're not using the flame. You're not using heat. When, with a heat gun, you're using heat. With a, welding, with a welding rod, you're using heat, right? The resistance that is the air gap between the end of the rod. V equals IR, right? We all remember our, our, our again, this is high school chemistry, high school physics. This is not, this is not complicated stuff. When you have that gap and you have a ton of electrons going across that gap, you, hit, you wind up producing a ton of heat that melts the two metals and the metals, as they melt, bond with each other. That's what welding is, right? When you're using the open flame of, uh, of a soldering iron, of, of a, a soldering torch, right? Of a map gas torch to, so you can solder some pipe, right? Again, in commercial jobs, you're using PEX. Nobody, nobody tells us anymore, right? But... That would be captured by my modification. You would still have to apply uh, for a hot work permit. So this is just me saying, listen, there are some unreasonable things that this wording captures that everybody in the room would understand is unreasonable. Painting a room is going to now require this permit if we don't change this wording. And that's because, as anyone who's ever painted a room knows, the drying of paint, that oxidation process, is an exothermic process. Everyone who's ever painted a room knows that by the time you're done painting that room, you're dripping, you're dripping with sweat because the room is that, just that much hotter than it was when you started. It's an exothermic pr process. It produces heat. And every one of the town council members that, that were in that room and I made that presentation, every one of them, every single one of them has painted a room. Like, don't lie to me and say that you haven't painted a room. Right. Look, the people in that room are of a certain age where that's just something everyone did. Everyone has done it at least once. And you know, by the end of it, you're, you're down to a t-shirt and you're pouring sweat because of that exothermic process. Because the room gets hotter. Because the drying of the paint produces heat. Now, if, we're, if, if we don't get rid of those two words like I suggested, this is going to capture painting jobs. Painting jobs. Painting jobs are now going to require... A, a painting job, a finished renovation job, where you're just replacing trim, maybe rehanging some cabinetry, maybe replacing some sheetrock, and then running paint over everything, maybe doing some flooring, right? None of this is going to involve the use of the use of sparks, flame, or heat. But all of those things I just said are going to wind up producing heat. So now these finished carpenters and the guy who's doing the painting, this whole process is like a two-week renovation, maybe a three-week renovation. We're going to double the length of time that this renovation is going to take and we're going to force somebody who's rolling, who's running a roller up and down a wall to have somebody on Firewatch standing behind him playing with his phone. Yeah, okay, it's not going to catch fire because it's, it's freaking painting a room. It's not going to catch fire. This is not ever going to produce an, un, an, an unintentional fire. Never in a million years is this going to do it. But it produces heat. Therefore, you're going to have to apply for a, for a, uh, for a hot work permit. And if we're going to talk about, and if, and if your response is, oh, well, nobody's going to enforce the rule like that. Well, that's the way the rule is written. So what you're talking about is a, is a policy of selective enforcement. And I really wish Randy DeBell, our attorney, actually elucidated the, the, the members there on the, the legal ramifications for having a policy of selective enforcement. So that's, that's the entirety of what I was trying to present. We've talked about it on this show. That's the entirety of my presentation. That's the entirety of my mild opposition to the way the thing is worded. Right? And this is something we went over on the show already. And again, we, like, you don't have to be an expert. We talked about this in the last show. You don't have to... You're, you're not going to hear from builders on this sort of thing. You're not going to hear from quote-unquote experts in the field because they're not going to say no. They're not going to say, well, Town & Milford has this new permit. We're not doing it. What it's going to do is delay scheduling. So if you have this big project that's going to take months and months, two more weeks means there's two more weeks that you're not getting the project done. So if you have, let's say, 100 jobs in the course of a year that take the course of the year to do, to, to do if you're increasing the length of time that it takes, then you're decreasing the number that you can possibly do in a year. 
This is where it's going to be hurting development. This is where these private developers, they're not going to see it that cost burden directly. This is, it's going to be mostly opportunity cost. It's going to be the fact that these checks aren't something they can clear for another two weeks for all of these jobs. And it's going to wind up piling up. And the cost of doing business broadly here in New Milford will tend to increase. So this is, so this is where we're going to see that the effect on development. And you don't need to be a builder, an expert in the field to say that. This is just really common sense when it comes to just the economics of the thing. And, I, and we talked about in the last show, too, where this came from, and that is reactionary politics. Reactionary politics tend to, to produce the worst politics. Now, again, again, I'm, this is a mild complaint. This is mild opposition. I knew this was going to come through. I, I understand why it would come through. Not here to, you know, to dunk on the town council for, for approving it the way that if it was approved the way it was written. And again, I wasn't about to complain without a solution, with that, which is just dropping those two words. You're still going to get everyone that uses sparks, flames, or heat. And I gave you the examples of, of what those would include. We're talking about this not because I had to take an L on it. It's not me being butthurt on the matter. But why? Why is it that I had to take just take an L on the matter? More importantly, why did I find myself on the side of the Dem Dames? Is it because they are also libertarians who don't like regulation of private development broadly? Or is it because Pete Bass Republican, Republican bad, Pete Bass bad, we vote no. Watch for yourself and you tell me. For those that, by the way, for those that didn't quite get the wording, Randy Bella did and explains thusly. Torch applied roofing, pipe sweating, and any similar applications producing or using sparks. You would remove producing or, so it would read, any similar applications using sparks, flame, or heat. So it's up to you whether or not the production of sparks is enough of a hazard to create a hot work environment. Sparks, flame, or heat. Remember that, too. It's not just sparks. Anything that produces heat, as we described, which could be something as pedantic as painting a room. So we get the wording. My argument was very simple and very clear. We've beaten it to death now. Even Randy understood the argument, so if you guys didn't understand it from me, let's, let's hear it from Randy. Mike raised an issue that it might be too much because it, it, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a degree less. In other words, it's, a, it's less than, it, it, it trips the wire less than if it was a, you, were, you were using a flame. So now you guys know, you guys know what I was asking for, and you know why. Again, Hillary Ram agrees with the, with the opposition that I'm presenting, but does she agree with the argument? I mean, we can start here where we can start here, where she accidentally almost concedes the entire debate. Have you heard any negative um, from contractors, developers? I have not. Oh, God. Any feedback negatively from that type of that community? Uh, no, I, I'm not. I have not. Okay. One of the biggest lessons of trial law is knowing what not only what questions to ask of a witness, but what questions not to ask. In this case, Hillary is implying you would need to hear the advice of these proverbial builders in order to come to the conclusions that we can come to from common sense. She's implying the first question that gets asked, is implying, is just an appeal to authority. You don't need to do that. In fact, it hurts your case to do something like this. Just like I've done, demonstrate the very, very basic economics as I already have. Ask the other councilmen if they want to drag out a finish work renovation of like a week or two, of like a week or two, by like a week or two, because the drying of paint is an exothermic process. Notice the difference in the intent here with what I've argued. And now she almost... To, to her credit, she almost starts heading down this pathway, but then misses the point pretty badly. I think we should change it because if it doesn't legally change anything, we don't have to have another ordinance about it. It, it uh -huh. precludes some of those smaller type jobs from being um, worried about falling under this umbrella and That's dissuading the smaller type jobs. So I think, I think why not, not what I meant. change it? Yeah. 
That's not what I meant. Size doesn't matter. It was never about the quote unquote smaller jobs. It was about jobs that met the definition at a trivial level that we were never intending to capture, no matter how big or small the job. Pre-drilling into metal, pre-drilling into metal studs if you're hanging, hanging in cabinetry. Not about some sort of class divisions of builders. Here though, here though, at least we can apply Hinlund's razor, which is never a tribute to malice, what you can easily attribute to incompetence. Sitting next to Hillary, if you didn't see, was Mary Jane Lundgren, who actually supported the original text and not the revisions I was producing. The, this, this seems to be the only thing she's voted in favor of. of the, it seems to be the only time she's ever voted in favor of a quote-unquote Bass-originated bill in, and in any way in disagreement with Hillary. This is the only time I've ever seen this, seen this happen. Remember, we're going into this with Mary Jane Lundgren's history and with her known open hostility toward everything for which I stand, including my person. I'm not poisoning the well. I'm just characterizing the, the context of the situation. Here's Mary Jane Lundgren. Well, here, here she is. I'm opposed to changing it. I think we should leave it the way it is. I mean... The way if we had a professional was, coming in and telling us it had to be changed, you know, I could see, you know, the argument possibly, but because that's not the case, um, you know, I don't think um, it should be changed. If we had a professional come in, because that's not the case, who did come to the podium? I was the only one that came to the podium. What are you implying here, Mary Jane? I guarantee if Adriana Riccio, who is definitely not an expert and is definitely not more of an expert than I am, said word for word, absolutely verbatim what I did, Mary Jane Lundgren would be so emphatically in favor of my proposed changes, she'd be outright insulting the entire rest of the room to demand the change. Again, what matters is the why. And let's not kid ourselves as to what the why is here. Hillary Ram is at worst, if I'm to do the exact opposite of applying the principle of charity, right? Hillary Ram is at worst opportunistically and, and incompetently using my, my opposition. That's the worst interpretation. Compare that to Mary Jane. Again, even in context and not in a vacuum, I could easily apply Hanlon's razor to Hillary Ram. Can I do that with Mary Jane? You guys tell me, can I do that with Mary Jane? Like, am I reading too much into this knowing the context of the situation, and knowing the history that she's had in her discussions of me, knowing the condescending tone that she's used to, in reference to me and to talk to me every single time this has come up. There is another damn dame in the room, of course, while, <laughs> while we shift the subject here, and we could always rely on Alexander Thomas for the, well, I'll just say it, why not, the worst possible take. Lots of things that you do might produce a spark that is going to go anywhere. I heard Mr. Sonnell will say that. That's, I Correct. understood that. So I can see the difference. My suggestion would be we go with what's suggested so far by our foreign marshal and our attorney, but that we review again after, oh what, six months or whatever to see how many were applied That's for. Is it doing the job that we need? Are we getting pushback? from anyone. I mean, like anything else, you introduce something new, then you go back and you check to see if it's getting the work done or is something wrong with it. That, that's not going to happen. That's never going to happen. You're, we're never going to have this review. And I already told you, you're not going to hear from the developers. You're not going to hear from the build, builders because they're not going to be so patently in their face that they're going to have a specific opposition to this specific thing. It's going to wind up getting classed broadly into the, into the umbrella of permitting that they see. They're not going to see this directly. The intern that they have that's, doing the, that's filing the, 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 the clerical paperwork for them they have, I mean, they're like three layers removed from the owners of these, of these private developers. They're like three layers removed, right? Like, this, this is just not going to happen, and I already explained why. You guys have been cynics this whole administration, and this is the one time your cynicism would be justified. I, I, I don't even know where to start. Yes, the Republicans are incorrect on this one. However, yes, this is also not high on my attention list. But we're starting here with this hot work permitting subject because it's a great primer for what actually separates us. And I say primer because this is going to bring us to the two much larger subjects. 
which are going to be we're, we're, we're going to be focusing on is the opposition to the subject matter. That's part one in content. And part two, the arguments behind them. And the place we're going to start with the first one is the five million dollar budgetary surplus. Now remember, the the budget that was approved at referendum for the current year, the current fiscal year, for the municipal side of the budget was roughly thirty eight million dollars. What we're looking at is a projected five million dollar surplus. This should take you back. This is this is we are talking about being fourteen percent under budget. Or at least there's going to be a 14% surplus. This should take you back. Now, this isn't something where it's like, this is an oh crap moment. But you should be asking tough questions at this point. And there may be great answers. There might be great answers and we can say, okay, all right, great my teeth, grin and bear it, let's move on. But what we're looking at is, roughly speaking... A five million dollar municipal su surplus. The Dems lost their minds over a less than two million dollar surplus in both of the last two years worth of surpluses. We talked about this on my interview with Pete Bass with Pete last year. Let's see if I have that. Do I have that? Uh, let me pull that out on my notes. We so in my interview with Pete Bass last year. Uh, we need to go to here. There we go. In my interview, which I did with Pete Bass, which you guys can see from, from last year, this was on, uh, let's see, do we don't have a date? No, we don't have, October 6th, 2021. So just over a year ago, Pete Bass kind of, kind of, we, we kind of promised that the projection was just a matter of revenue, uh, unexpected revenues from COVID. So, COVID meant certain expenses were over-projected because we just weren't spending as much money because we just weren't taking on more projects. And there was a lot more in revenues because of the influx of outsiders and New Yorkers. And basically promised that this was going to get resolved and we wouldn't have the type of um, budget surplus that we had into that year, especially knowing that that was like the only talking point that Democrats had in 2021 that wasn't just Republicans bad, Right. And the $5 million, again, is on that $38 million. Am I glad we didn't overspend? I mean, obviously, I'm glad we didn't overspend. You have a budget, you stick to it. But this looks, this just optically looks like a gross error in, in building this past year's budget. But of course, the question is, why is this thing off by this much? So we're looking at being off by revenue projections by roughly $3 million and roughly $2 million in terms of expenses. So the amount of money that we spent was $2 million short of what we expected. And the amount of money we collected, excuse me, was $3 million more than expected. I'm still groaning. How could you possibly be off by that much? Right? And I'm not saying that this is, this is total condemn condemnation right now. Uh, there's a tough question. How could you possibly be off by that much? There might be a great answer. Right? So before you can do anything with that money, you've, you're legally and clerically obliged to just put all of that money into the unassigned fund before you can do anything with it. Well, then, then what? Then what? There is a very good argument to just write checks to the taxpayers. And I'm sure that there are some libertarians watching tonight where they would say, yeah, Mike, I mean... You, you, you way over collected effectively and you way underspent that money should just go right back to the taxpayer. Maybe, maybe the taxpayers don't want the town and the Milford to spend the money just yet. Maybe the expenses themselves are fine. The capital purchases are fine, but we don't want to spend them just yet. Maybe they completely disagree with a certain number of those expenditures. When you have the layers of the budget process that you normally would have, it's easier to to modify some of those things and it's easier to spend more time on that subject matter because you get more time to to go item by item but you know again there there are there are plausible explanations for all of this and Pete put together a very detailed explanation uh, on there in the uh, here bring it up 
in during the November 28th 2000, uh, uh, town council meeting. It's here on the town of New Milford's page. If you just go to the videos tab, you can click on that. We've actually separated this thing out so you have the entire hour and eight minute long presentation where you get to see exactly what the expenditures that we're looking that Pete's looking to expend, um, how they are broken down, and what the rationale is for all of that. And you're going to be able to get the rationale broadly, and you're going to be able to see all the back and forth. Um, as it's happening with the with, between the council between the councilmen and uh, between the councilmen and also Pete Bass, so that's where you can see a lot of these exchanges that we're going to be getting excerpts from. Let me just bring my notes back up, so you guys can check that out. I should probably put that link uh, in here. Do I have that link? Yeah. Okay. So it's it's over an hour long, and, it, and it's going to go into every detail of every expenditure. We're not going to go over all that tonight. It's just not important to the main thesis that we're talking about here tonight. But you guys, check out the video. Make that call yourself. I'm going to put, I, I got to put that in the, that link in, this, in, the, in the comment section here. Right? So let me get, let me get to that. Here we go. All right. Here. You got, I'm going to got, just capture this link from my notes. We'll put this into the comments section here on Facebook. And we'll now put it into YouTube. All right, so so you guys can check that video out on your time when you when when you have the time. We're going to be talking more about broad strokes. I'm not going to nitpick the thing, right? For those of you that are following, you quite I'm sure you understand the bike shed thought experiment, which is you know you have a nuclear power plant that's coming to town that are, that people are going to be talking about, and you have the reactor core, which is going to be like two million dollars. You have the office building and and you know the clerical buildings, the administrative buildings. That's going to be about a million and a half dollars. And then on the side of the administrative building is this bike shed. That's going to be like 150 bucks. So where are the bureaucrats going to spend their time and energy? Are they going to spend it on the reactor core? Are they going to spend it on the design and build of the administrative offices? Because if you get a 10% savings, even a 10% savings in, say, the reactor core, you wind up getting $200,000 in cost savings on the process. Or are they going to spend their entire time on the bike shed? Are they going to say, oh, the reactor core, nuclear physics, whoop, but I know something about how to build a bike shed. And what we're going to do is nitpick this bike shed. And after spending months and months delaying the entire project, because, you know, maybe if we source the roofing materials from another builder, maybe if we do a design that's more of a lean-to design than, say, you know, a, a gable design, and you wind up saving like 50 bucks and everyone shakes, you know, shakes their hands, gentlemen, 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 gentlemen. gentlemen. And you wind up, we, you're proud of ourselves because we just delayed this project another two and a half months and uh, we saved 50 bucks. We now have a $100 bike shed instead of a $150 bike shed. That's the bike shed thought experiment. So no, I'm not going to look at a $5 million surplus and nitpick the expenditures in this, vi in this video at the very least. You guys are, look, are voters, so this thing is going to go to a referendum at some point. Do check it out. Do check it out. There's something you completely object to then that would be a reason to vote against the thing. But the short version of how this is going to get broken up in broad strokes is that uh, 1.7 million is going to be carried in force, which means to be carried over into the next year to abate some of the tax burden on residents. Uh, what that and where that source from is that uh, that's the one 1.7 million is the rough shortfall of expenditures. So that's just going to go right into your. It's just going to be hopefully deduct from. Uh, the tax burden in the, ne in the next fiscal year. And then there was roughly $2.7 million spent on capital. Well, there was part of that presentation was a projection to spend two, roughly $2.7 million on capital purchases. Um, things like trucks, things like equipment for the fire departments, things like uh, you know lawnmowers and stuff like that for park and rec, stuff like that sort of thing. Uh, even if that wasn't, even if I wasn't right exa exactly on, on all of those things, it's the same concept. And then whatever was left over would just get put into the unassigned fund because number one, this is all subject to audit, so we don't know the exact dollars amount, dollar amounts. And number two, you know, you want to if there is something that comes up that is a proper emergency in this fiscal year, just get it done now. And then if it's not there, then you roll it over into the next year and you deduct it from the tax bill. <clears throat> but the fact of the matter is that this is a this is an F load of money, and it's and it's an F load to be off by. Yes, it's going to go to the Board of Finance, and then there's going to be a town meeting, and this should probably be part of the budget referendum 
instead of just having a separate town meeting, you should probably just go on the referendum as a separate question, given the timing and scale of the expenditures here. This isn't our normal $1.4 million over. This is $5 million. And in fact, it was actually technically a little bit more. I have some skepticism here. But let's hear the explanation, right? Let's hear what Pete Bass has. I, I asked all these tough questions. Let's hear Pete answer these questions. This is Pete explaining why this money ought to be spent now rather than post-budget. With inflation running at a current 8 to 12% in real-world terms, not a bunch of garbage that they feed you on the... Uh, on the news, based purchasing capital items now, as we've done for the last five years, has saved us a ton of money. It will give us a better return on our investment than waiting as inflation eats away at our funds and increases capital costs and increases our municipal budget. And these are items that we would normally may have to put in the budget, which then would increase our cost to our taxpayer. Why would we double dip if we have the ability to do this as we've done in all the years prior? Why wouldn't we do this? Okay. So they would be in the budget anyways, and it would be cheaper to buy it now. So all of these capital expenses were going to be in the budget that would go to a referendum, and it would be cheaper to buy it now. I mean, it's not incorrect that if that's the case, then yes, it would be cheaper to buy it now. And since I guess it's going to a town meeting and getting Board of Finance, I mean, I, I guess it's going to be getting the Board of Finance oversight and it's going to go to a town meeting anyway. So I guess you could make an argument for consent on the government there, I suppose. But budget season starts next month. So excuse my skepticism. I'm not going to say just no outright but like okay and this is what i've talked about before on the show uh, this is all of the candidates by the way if you're a candidate that's going to be coming on the show in 2023 first things first thanks a ton in advance right always happy to have any candidates on the show for especially for elected office here in milford but i'm giving you the answer to this question right now there is such a thing as competing interests we have this right now Right, we're, we're seeing this on display. We have the competing interest of cons ensuring consent through the normal processes versus the cost savings to the taxpayer. There is a t pathway to the latter. There is a pathway to that. But remember that like, if this was $20 million on a $38 million, I'd say the budget process is itself compromised. So no, until this budget process itself gets resolved, the money goes straight back to the taxpayers. If we were off by that much, it'd be a grander indication of a failure of the budget process, period. And it needs to be completely revised and rewritten. And until that time comes around, that $20 million checks to the taxpayer. Done. And yes, there would be outrage in town and it would be a justified outrage, but we're not at 20 million. We're at 5 million. We're also not at $50,000. And if it was $50,000, I mean, this would just be completely trivial compared to the overall budget. And, you know, just spend the damn money. I, I don't even care at that point. I, it, this is, this would be, it, you know, the bike shed experiment. We're spending, we're, we're spending how long on a bike shed? Now, I've laid out the competing interests. And there's a great reason to be skeptical. But if you're willing to go along now, then the idea is next to nothing in capital, period. Right? So... What that means is if if there, if if these are the all of the capital expenditures that you were, you were projecting would be going into the budget next year, then okay. But budget season starts in a month, and I better not I better damn well not see you next to any capital expenditures going into twenty twenty going into twenty twenty three. That number better be really close to zero. And again, that one point seven million dollars is just basically going to be a tax abatement for next year. That is not an excuse to just spend another $1.7 million in operations and just pump it into the budget. Remember, if these things don't happen, this is election losing stuff, right? So maybe there, maybe you have cost, ex, ex, cost increases that are an increase of $1.7 million. But if that's the case, then it would be a budgetary hole from last year. It would be the exact same number as last year. But this isn't an excuse to just treat this as, oh, well, you know, 
$1.7 million worth of padding going into next year. No. No. Not only were you off by $1.7 million so you can spend $1.7 million ostensibly, but you also have that $1.7 million. So this could be looked at through the lens of, oh, well, now we have $3.4 million where you can just raise the operational budget by. No. Absolutely not. And again, this is election losing stuff if you do that. I- I've laid everything out for the de- for the Dem Dames to, applo- to oppose. And I got to give Hillary Ram a little bit of credit because she's getting close. This is Hillary Ram. Um, why wouldn't you put everything back to the mill rate and put build this in the budget? Because then you're, can then look you're at double it. taxing the public. How is that double taxing? Money? Well, because right now you're using it with not, with 20, 21 Mute, tax please. dollars. So Go ahead. Sorry, Hillary. Using these Hillary. dollars today, right? Uh, I don't have. We'd have to, have to go back to the taxpayer and use the same amount of money for what we already have right now, <clears throat> and then add on anywhere from fourteen to twenty percent to it inflationary costs. Okay, I mean, there's your answer. I mean, in fairness to, in deference to Hillary, she's close. Now you have to argue the principle of the thing and not argue on pure pragmatism. Pete's giving you the pragmatic argument. You can't win that argument. You aren't going to win the pragmatic argument. You have to go on principle. And then she gets so close. So why, why would we do that? Because this is taxpayer money. So basically, we, 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 taxpayer, we were overtaxed, so it should go back. And, and then anything you're asking for for next year should be approved in the budget. Well, Hillary, right? we didn't overtax people. So let me explain how we didn't. Mm-hmm. So by using the $1.788,755, that's the differential in the taxes that we raised. So I'm asking for mill rate reduction, which brings that to zero where we get the additional money in the fees that we generated by our strong economy. And this is the issue right here. Notice how I never said anything about overtaxing the taxpayers. Which one sounds like campaign speech material? Which one sounds like cautious opposition on principle? Either find the exact expenditure you don't like, which is going to be a losing battle. You're going to lose that battle. Or level with him like i'll give you the quote i mean you're asking me to go out on a huge limb right just tell him to your face you're asking me to go out on a huge limb by just taking your word on five million dollars which includes 2.7 million dollars in new capital expenditures if that's the case pete then there better be nothing in capital in one month's time and we better damn well reflect how much we were off by in the next year's budget. And if not, this is going to be our campaign. And just say it. Just say it in front of everyone. Right? Because at that point, you're conceding the pragmatic argument. You're saying, okay, but you, but this is going to be our campaign next year if you don't do this. If you don't actually hold hold your feet to the fire, then we will. Right? And just say so. If you look at the people in the room as your neighbors then it's perfectly okay to just lay out the fact that this is five freaking million dollars. This will cost you voters and we'll campaign against you on this one. I don't know why I'm giving the Dems unsolicited free advice. But do you see the difference between how you could use, you could, you could oppose this or you could lay down a okay, but instead of what we're seeing here in these clips. If you look at these people instead of as being your neighbors, as enemies in combat, then you oppose the thing in the moment. Not not something that we're going to hold you to. All right, we get it, but we're going to hold you to it. You oppose it in the moment because you can't afford to take any L because you're just enemies in combat and Republican bad, oppose everything. Knowing too... No, knowing too that this is all within the context of what we what we saw from you in your campaign in 2021. If you didn't poison the well, then you have a potentially, I mean, you have a potentially winning strategy here in 2023. But of course, you poisoned the well in 2021, so kind of a moot point. But we find out right away 
If this is opposition on principle, in which case you wouldn't need to make any other argument or move the goalposts, what does Hillary Ram do later in the meeting? Forward. I'm just having a hard time just seeing all of these numbers and, you know, saying, yeah, lo- let's go for it. But, I mean, we didn't have all of this ahead of time. Well, so. I think we need we to be cognizant go. of, unfor- unfortunately, the inflationary times that we're in, right. the shortages that we're in. And if we continue to avoid it, your, pri- your prices right. are going to go up 15, 20 percent. And is that really good to the taxpayer? So that we know that we're having escalated costs. We have an opportunity to address these costs and we can do it in a compliant way. And we've done this for the last five years. Mm-hmm. And think about if we waited those times. Think about the millions of extra dollars that our taxpayers mm-hmm. would be spending on higher inflationary costs. So my asking the council to do this in this manner is to save the taxpayers money, to get much needed capital items that the town's business needs to run. So we went from the argument of the opposition on principle to the opposition on, we didn't have enough time. Pete's frustration is visible and relatable. If you weren't, if you weren't just the party of opposition, that's just going to ad hoc their way into every position and to just holding every single position and constantly drag these conversations on forever, then you would stick to the argument on principle. And the argument on principle is, okay, but again, the pathway to opposition is obvious. And I already laid it out. This, this isn't it. This isn't it. It, just, it looks like it's just needless filibuster. And at a, at a municipal level meeting, we're like five steps removed from D.C., the people in this room live no more than 20 minutes from your doorstep. Of course, we can't have a conversation about money that doesn't involve the same argument we always get. I, while I totally support the needs of all our departments, no question, no question, I'm disappointed that the Board of Ed was not asked about where their priorities were, and I think that more should have gone towards the Board of Ed because we are all one. I'll be voting no on this for that reason, but not because I don't support what our departments need. I absolutely support what our departments need. It, it never ends. It just never ends. And after an hour and eight minutes, we finally get a vote. The first vote is the clerical vote to move all this money into the, into the uh, uh, unassigned fund so that it can be either given back to um, the taxpayers as as as, a, as an abatement next year, or um, to be spent on well things. So this is the clerical version of the vote. So I'd like to move for <clears throat> uh, first item under 11D that we move two million seven hundred two thousand four hundred twenty three dollars and twenty four cents uh, from our surplus to capital reserve. This is from the 2021 2022 surplus, and this is subject to audit. Second. That. That was all seconded those, by Paul. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Okay. Thank Stephanie, you. Stephanie, you got that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Katie? Second item under uh, 11D would be that I would move that we take $1,788,755 from our 2021-2022 budget surplus to be used for tax slash mill rate stabilization and reduction. Second. Any discussion? Oh, I can't because we call the question right. I just had a question. Right? Yep. Yeah, all. all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? Aye. Oops, sorry. Yes. Aye. Okay. Tom and Doug, did you say aye? Aye. Thank you. And then we get the vote for the expenditures themselves once they've been, once the money has been approved to go into the unsigned fund. Okay. A motion and a second? Yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Right. Who was the second? Again, if I was there, I may have actually sided with them for the second vote. But the question is why? And the, an- and the answers are not the same. 
And it's the same thing even when we're talking about a $400 a month travel stipend for the mayor that didn't get approved with his raise because of a clerical error, which took 17, excuse the language, goddamn minutes of last week's town council meeting. We could have gotten done at like 8 o'clock at night. We could have gotten done at 8 o'clock. Yes, it matters. Some of us don't get paid by the hour, and some of the people in the room don't get paid at all. As a brief aside, yeah, the town council meetings are there exclusively for the purpose of handling the business of the town council, and that's it. That's it. It's to make motions and either vote or vote against the motions or not, and then have some discussion where there are points where you it's the only way for the for the body to officially meet, and you want to have a back and forth when it, it comes to the points of discussion. When it's a subject matter that really all we're talking about is, do you, are you in favor of the thing or are you not? No. Like, this whole, you're going to just gr- sit there and grandstand and drag this thing out. D- drag out every flag bill that comes, comes to, to the floor, that comes to the floor, Right. The meetings are there to conduct the business of the town council. And that's it. That's it. There's no reason any of these meetings should ever really honestly go over an hour in length. But hey, this is the world we live in. And there's no reason to subject your neighbors to this. This isn't D.C. This is New Milford. And pay attention, folks, because when it came to the the $400 travel stipend, Here's the, here's the initial motion that Katie Francis makes. Pay attention to the very end. Uh, this is in regard to the compensation subcommittee. What I would like to move is to approve a $400 monthly car allowance to cover automobile expenses for New Milford Mayor. But if you'd like to leave us, I'm Mayor. Absolutely willing. Thank you. Um, this would be take effect as of today, December 12, 2022. Takes effect today. December 12th, 2022. So it's part of the damn motion. Now, again, Katie Francis explains the rationale for the stipend in the first place. Just a little background. Long overdue. The um, compensation subcommittee uh, that met and (coughs) presented uh, their decisions to us in January of this year included, as you will remember, oh, you're all moved around here. That uh, there was a, um, a part of the package for the pension, et cetera. There was also, we approved a uh, salary for the office of mayor that had not been increased in years and years. And um, one of the items that the subcommittee added into that, which is what prior mayors have had, is a, rather than have a town vehicle, the mayors receive a reimbursement, if you will, of $400 a month for the cost of operating the vehicle. Uh, And it was on my notes that I read it. It, I was part of that compensation committee and we talked about it and it was there. And it was only recently that the mayor happened to mention that he had not uh, gotten that. So I did as much due diligence as I could do. It was not in the written minutes. I tried to find the video. Um, we did, that was when we were doing the video the old way, I guess, in January. And I couldn't find it on that day and it, the video <clears throat> would end beforehand because it was the last thing on the agenda. So I'm making the motion tonight now that I know that he has not gotten that. So uh, we did all agree on the salary and on, I can't prove that I said anything about it when we voted. So that's, that's my motion. And Chris Cosgrove would later go on to explain that the reason this wasn't in that meeting in the first place was just a mere clerical or administrative error. When the committee discussed salary, always a part of that was, um, was a whole compensation package, which included a car. Um, and to give you, we all know we've got a lot of roads and, and the mayor's job takes them all around the town, putting a lot of mileage. And to give you, um, and, and, and I think we discussed, when we discuss this amongst ourselves, that was all part of it. Somehow it didn't get translated in the meeting and I think that was just an error. And of course there's going to be opposition. What does it say? 
We know it's coming at this point. What does it say about the, uh, about this, the nature of the thing when it's when it's gotten to the point where I, we know the opposition is coming, right? It's a four hundred dollar a month lobby. Yes, it's a raise. Yes, it's a forty eight hundred dollar a year raise. Yes, it's a roughly three to four percent on his new salary. Uh, um, it's a roughly three to four percent wait raise. You could just simply say, well, I mean, Pete Bass now he makes X. He can afford to drive his own vehicle. And if that's, the, if that's the argument, you could just say it. Just say that, and then you vote. And that's it. But of course, you can't say that because, number one, it's completely unpalatable to say something like that. And number two, it's kind of stupid because he's just going to declare that on his, on, his, on his income taxes, on his personal income taxes in the next year. So instead, we, we get this. We did raise, 20%, raise him 20%. Was that about what... What the raise was from where he was to twenty percent in one year. So I guess what I'm saying is maybe this does have to be sort of incrementally built in because it's you know it's quite a big increase in one year. To yeah, if you completely ignore the previous like twenty years, this isn't to say I'm necessarily in favor of the raise. I don't have to be right, but you can't seriously be making this argument, as Katie Francis later points out. Do you remember, because you were there in these meetings when we talked about it, that we went back and found that it had been 15, it was 15 years, and the mayors that were seated in those 15 years got a total average of $524 a year in a raise. And I believe my words were, I was embarrassed and disgusted by the fact that all of those mayors, that we expect somebody to be the head of our town, and that's what we paid. How in the world did you not see this coming? And mention, remember, she mentioned the incremental half of that. Like, what? Either the stipend is necessary or isn't. You wouldn't, you wouldn't incrementalize this thing into the budget? It, what are you talking about? You wouldn't incrementalize a stipend. It either is justified or it isn't. If it's that much of a burden on the taxpayer, they shouldn't be paying it. If we're talking about it being a burden on the taxpayer, you don't incrementalize it. You just don't pay it. But I, I, you know, I got to give Harry Ram the benefit of the doubt. We got to let her explain what she means by that incremental implementation. I, I was, had hoped we had split this into two years because it's a lot of a burden on the taxpayer. So I, I we didn't do that. So we approved well, the whole thing in the budget. So let me years, just finish. Hillary. Let me just finish. So I do think. This is adding another, what, 4000 4500 a year? No, it's no. 400 a month times 12? It, 48. But, so 4800 yeah. Okay. So, the, when, when so that's adding budget? another 5000 So I'm just saying, budget, if we had Hillary. split this into two years, then oh I... God. That's the only reason I'm a no, is I think it's a big Take burden. Take it to a vote. It's a big burden. Okay. okay. And as Paul Murphy said, this is like 14 minutes into this conversation. I laid it out in, in two sentences, what the opposition is. And then you vote. This shouldn't be taking 14 minutes. And then if we're 14 minutes in and you can see Paul Murphy's getting at least somewhat frustrated and he says, let's take it to a vote, which is not, I call the question. When you call the question, you say the words, I call the question. You have to at least have call the question. None of those words were all were uttered. This is not a calling of the question. But why is, why is Paul doing this? Do these sound like the arguments I would make? in opposition to this sort of thing? How about Lisa Hita, fellow Democrat? Is this the type of argument that Lisa Hita, who had some serious objections at certain times, is this the type of argument that she'd be making? Or is this just another Republican bad? We're going to oppose everything in the most dragged out manner possible. And we're going to ad hoc our way to every single position, right? Even the most absolutely inane and stupid of all oppositions that like on its face just make no sense does all of this within the context of the non-stop not really even filibustering like if, if, if this was filibustering it would look like what the new hampshire libertarians do which is to just occupy a room and say i have the floor until 10 30 at night when it's time to close when there's no more time left in the meeting and then you have to vote to extend the length of the meeting. And then you just sit there and you hog the microphone until 11 o'clock. And then you sit there and you hog the microphone until it gets to a point where it's midnight. Everyone says, screw it, we're going home. That's what a filibuster actually looks like. Does it sound like that? Does it sound even like good faith opposition? Or is it just grandstanding?
Are these wise and insightful observations and points of, of contention? Let's ask Mary Jane. Honestly, I don't remember any prior mayor getting compensation. Getting, oh, my God. Getting a car allowance? Yes. Yeah. Really? This is really the, the, the effective and insightful opposition you're going to use to convince the proverbial other side to oppose this sort of thing? It's completely irrelevant whether or not a previous mayor got this stipend. Either it's a good thing or it's a bad thing. This is your value judgment. This is what you were ostensibly elected, although you were elected by, as a winner by default. It was completely irrelevant whether or not a previous mayor put a computer into his budget in 1993. Therefore, by this argument, there should never have been a computer in the mayor's budget, even in 2022. Like, what's crazy is Katie Francis gave you guys the opening for, a, for proper, on principle opposition. She does it right here. What do you think it would cost the town to have a mayor who goes out and about as much as, a, as our mayor currently does and others have, mm -hmm. to have a, a vehicle that the town would have to maintain, pay for, upkeep, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Mm -hmm. This includes the gas, this includes the oil changes, the tires, everything like that, just mm -hmm. like you and I do for our cars. And About I have 1500 bucks a month. I have to say <laughs> that we arrived at 400 you hear that dismissive gasp? Tom's not wrong, but that's, but that's not what you go after. Uh, what Katie Francis presented was a false alternative. All you have to do is say, what do you think the cost the town to pay? What do you think it would cost the town to pay neither and tell the mayor he had a whopping raise he can afford to drive his own car around? Let him declare the difference on his income taxes at the end of the year. It's a dumb argument, but it's at least something. It's at least something of substance that works on principle. Either, it, this is just, again, for the folks that don't understand, this is just a race. This is just a $4,800 a year race. Either you're in favor of it or you're, or you're not. There's really nothing there. There's really nothing there to say, all right, well, other than to say it's a $4,800 a year race. He already makes enough money. He can afford to do this. This is a burden on the taxpayer that is that we're not going to, to, to force a taxpayer to pay. If you're going to say that, then that's all you have to say. Instead, we get an obviously, unbelievably losing debate about what Katie Francis's false alternative would cost. Instead of pointing out that it's a false alternative, it's a debate about whether Tom was right about it being 15, costing $1,500, which the Dems are just, Dems are just wrong about. It, Tom is 100% correct. This is, if, this, if this was the actual alternative... And there wasn't the third direction of, no, we get nothing. Uh, Tom is not wrong about how much this is going to wind, this would, would otherwise wind up costing if, if that was the alternative, as Chris Cosgrove dutifully points out. So uh, in my company, uh, we have, I get a company car. That's at my option. Other people who choose to take a, um, a monthly stipend, they get $1,200 a month. Now that's grossed up because you get taxed mm -hmm. on it and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And it's meant to give a person, I think, $700 a month mm -hmm. to spend on a, a vehicle that they use for company work. Mm -hmm. So $400 really doesn't cover the cost of a car, I don't think. No. And, and as, right. as Katie mentioned, the maintenance and all that that goes along that's with right. it. But um, I think that's what we discuss as an overall compensation that should be part of the compensation for the mayor's office. I laid this out for everyone. The opposition is at most two sentences, then you vote. But, of course, it just never ends. Katie, this would be effective uh, when? Effective today. I'm just it's asking, not, no, I said that in my question. motion. I'm sorry, I'm Alex. I said it. It's not retroactive. It's effective today. Okay. Right. So, you know, I wish I had asked David Lawson and Walter Bayer to be no. here. Because they yes. could have told you. You were there. We Both of you were there. And I believe no, you I'm were not, there, Jane. No. This was part of the damned motion. You can't be serious. You can't be serious. It's painfully obvious, obvious why Katie Francis is so frustrated at this point. And if you think it's over, nope. Do you think it gets better? Nope, too.
Hillary spoke her piece. I have something different. Our council rules say that when we bring something new to the floor, we bring it for discussion. It can't be brought to the council and voted oh on in God. the same night. Yes, it can. I, I move to suspend the rules we and you voted, yeah, yes. We all the time. Had so, we known what we, we were going to okay. be talking about, I think it would have been an opportunity call for us to have more information. Damn right, call the question. These meetings should never be more than an hour long. This is to, that they're there to handle town council business and nothing else. Call the question. If, if I was there, I'd be calling the question a lot more often. When you're out of... <laughs> when you're out of arguments, you can always tone police. I just want to say one thing. Anything. You know, you're allowed. And it's aside from this conversation <laughs> about the $400. I'm really tired of people calling the question. I feel like... What? Anytime I bring something up, or Hillary, or, Al or Alex brings something up, and somebody doesn't like it, they call a question. It's not and a so, matter of not liking it's happened like it. Mary Jane, yeah, but we're going on and on here when the mayor's out it's in the okay. hallway. It's all right. It's I, okay. It's a discussion. And we should have the discussion, and people should be allowed to talk without somebody calling the question. Enough with the calling the question, uh, please. We have been question. talking now for about 12 minutes. And nobody called the question. He nope. was trying nobody to call just said, Let's that go for the call. That's not yeah. call yeah. Well, that's it's calling the question. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's objectively not calling the question, which is why the procedure surrounding calling the question hasn't taken place. And no, you don't get to just endlessly ad hoc your way into embarrassingly idiotic oppositional positions for the obvious sake of virtue signaling your opposition. We have a two-word phrase for that, by the way. Don't we, Tom Esposito? Are we going to vote on this? Yeah. I'm not yes. calling the question, yes, Mary are. Jane, but there's really, this is getting to be a little crazy. We have four yeah. people Very here joyful. tonight Grand and we over. want to move forward. Sure. <laughs> I don't want Mary Jane to... Well, I know, but I'm, I'm just very sensitive to, because it's been going on, you know, for a while. No, it hasn't. Calling the question. Not you know. look at me. I no, never I'm not done it. Don't, don't get, don't take yeah, it. I never did it. But there are other people and they know who they are that constantly call the question False. when we have a discussion. And I'm, I'm, I just, you know, I think it cuts off debate. It cuts off any discussion. And I just don't think it's right. So I'm just saying. I think people need to be a little more mindful of it to allow people to have, have their say and have their conversation. So that's all. I'm done. The look on Katie Francis's face, face at the end. I wish I could pause and freeze frame it. Why does calling why does the calling of the question even exist, Mary Jane? Why do you think it even exists? For exactly this reason. And it's been done like four freaking times all year. This meeting and the last meeting are two of them. Outside of that, again, this is a conversation I've had in private with folks. Like if if I was on town council, I'd be calling the question constantly because we're there to conduct a business, which we did eventually get to. We did eventually finally get to the vote. We have a motion. We have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody no? I'm a no. Nay. There you go. Okay. Any abstentions? Oh, you're a no? Okay. Motion passes. Would you like to let the mayor come back no. in, please? This whole thing could have taken like five minutes. You lay out your argument just like I have. You hope you can convince someone to agree with you. Constantly acting like a badger, just opposing everything from every possible angle, no matter how objectively dumb, even when I agree with the conclusion. Read the damn room. Read the damn room. You win more flies with honey. Stop nitpicking every goddamn thing. Remember when, when approving the... Do you remember when approving the minutes took like half an hour? I have no idea why I'm giving you guys advice because either you won't heed it and I'm wasting my breath in doing so. Or, God forbid, you do heed my advice and you wind up winning some seats come election time. But if you are, and you're willing... But if you are willing to take my advice, and you're willing to accept there are some things we have similar conclusions on, Hillary, let's go, let's go get a cup of coffee and talk. Find a place downtown in Milford, and any time, any place, you name it, Hillary... And let everyone who wants to gawk and stare and take photographs of the two of us sitting down for a cup of coffee, 
let them let them gawk and stare. Let them take fo- photographs. You all know how to reach out to me. And to everyone else watching, understand that although we may agree on the conclusions sometimes, what matters is the why. And there, we are just not the same people. So, that's... That's going to wrap up the show for today. Let's stick around. Let's, let's, let's bring up your Q&A. Um, a reminder before we get into the Q&A, uh, hope, I'll hopefully have an interview for it. I'm realizing now it's Christmas Day would be Sunday, so maybe Monday instead. I really want to do something of a New Year's Eve event, maybe like a brief and, you know, maybe like a, a, a mid-afternoon sort of thing where we do kind of a year in review. Uh, and then I'm going to be taking a bit of a brief hiatus for a big project I'm taking uh, I want to uh, get into on the channel. And uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll upload directly some minor stuff here and there, some philosophical concepts and um, some stuff I'm seeing from like Chris Murphy to, to, to overview, to, to review. So that's what you guys can expect moving forward. So this is the time. If you want to get, it, get your Q&A in, this is the time. If you want to engage, this is the time. If you want to, to, to challenge me, this is the time to challenge me. Uh, as far as the stipend is concerned, yeah, somebody did mention about um, you should compare that to the superintendent. I'm not really keen on that. Um, because I don't know what their stipend is and I kind of don't care. The, the superintendent makes way more than, than the mayor anyways. And you could argue that there's way more to oversee with the board of ed. Um, especially because they're more directly, there's more direct oversight from, um, from the state. I, I don't know that it's comparable, but it's, it's kind of irrelevant. It's, it's just a raise. It's just a raise. And the question is, is it a, a worthwhile raise? So, you know, I kind of don't care what the superintendent makes. That's, uh, you know, it's four hundred dollars a month, uh, you know. So either, either it's a too much of a burden for the taxpayers, or it isn't, and that's really all there is to say about the thing. So let's let's go ahead and get on into your uh, questions, your answers. Thanks everybody for tuning in too, especially for those who have been participating. As I mentioned too, uh, there is a link in this video description to the Discord channel. Um, so if you want to do a call in, we check on the Discord server too. While we're here, we want to do this one. Uh, I don't see anybody in the Discord server, so. Um, if, if, if this is something where you guys have had technical problems with the Discord server, let me know and I'll, I'll walk p- folks through that for those that want to join in. So let's see what everyone has to say here on Facebook. Uh, Paul Murphy, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks everyone for watching too. We'll get into that in just a second. It looks like we didn't get any, any new commentary on YouTube. So that's going to basically wrap things up um, before I take my brief hiatus. So first things first, thanks so much for everyone who, on the channel who who it's a long show tonight so for, thanks genuinely grateful to everyone who watches everyone who sticks through all this everyone who watches live especially and those who watch afterwards for those who are watching live since i'm not going to see you until after christmas have a very merry christmas um, and hopefully we'll, we'll be able to see each other for in time for new year's at the very least and again again i do this for you guys i do this because you know I think you guys might appreciate it. So for those who do appreciate it, for those who do watch, no matter where you're coming from on the political spectrum, always super grateful. Always huge thanks to those who, to those who watch. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Merry Christmas, folks.